Welcome to the Ekinkar Soul Adventure Podcast, where you hear life-changing soul experiences that awaken the truth already within your heart and get practical tools to live a spirit-empowered life. I'm your host, Heather Devari. Thank you for listening and a special shout out to our audience around the globe. All right, get ready to raise your spiritual IQ. Our topic today is spiritual protection. As souls here on Earth School, we have every type of experience, good and bad, to teach us about divine love. Some experiences are challenging to say the least. Maybe right now you're handling a negative work environment or your kids are getting bullied at school. But fear not, help is available. There's a spiritual tool, a word, that anyone can use to increase confidence, reduce fear, and shore up their spiritual defenses. That word is hue. Hue is an ancient mantra of divine love. It's a non-denominational, spiritual exercise that can help anyone open themselves to the divine help that is always available. Sri Hero Klemp, the spiritual leader of Ekankar, explains how to use the hue for spiritual protection. He says, hue is a powerful defense. When you find yourself in need of extra strength or protection, sing hue inwardly or aloud. Fill yourself with love and Bathe in the light and sound of God. People all over the world sing you to receive protection from trouble or danger on the street, at school, or at home. Maybe you're wondering, can chanting a spiritual word and filling myself with love really protect me? Well, to answer that question, we have an extraordinary story from our guest today. He is originally from Mexico. He relocated to the U.S. in 2000, and for 20 years, he's been living in Minnesota and serving the Latino population as a Spanish-English medical interpreter. Welcome, Cesar Garcia. Hello, Heather. <laughs> Hello. So great to be here with you. It's so nice to have you here. Cesar, you have an amazing story about the hue and how you used it for protection in a life and death situation. Fortunately and unfortunately, I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to tell us what happened? Absolutely. I was living in Mexico City at the time, and I had been studying Yekinkar for maybe three years. And I had been invited to do a, a spiritual talk at the local Yekinkar Center in Mexico City on gratitude. But weeks had gone by, and I hadn't really prepared for my talk. So one morning, I decided that it was like maybe the talk was a week or two away, and I needed to really focus on gratitude to know what I was going to talk about. So I wrote down in my journal before I would leave for work, today I will be grateful for everything that I experience. I went on about my day. One of the things I did on my way to work was bring a check that I had been holding on to for a few weeks. This was around Christmas time. And in Mexico, employees get a Christmas bonus, like the yearly bonus you get it for Christmas time. And for whatever reason, I hadn't brought the check to the bank. So this one morning, I got the notch, okay, time to put this in the bank. Now, I was pretty broke at the time, and all the money I had, anything I owned was in that check, which was pretty small, <laughs> maybe $100 worth of today's money. And um, so I went, deposited the check, went to work, finished my work day. Then I went to spend the evening with my then partner. And at the end of the night, it was probably around midnight, I rode a taxi to come back home. And two blocks from arriving home, these two men jump in the cab where I'm riding. It's a little Volkswagen Beetle. And they come in with a gun. They sit, one on my right, one on my left. And they start screaming at me to intimidate me, cuss words and saying, close your eyes or you're dead, pointing that gun to my temple which I had never in my life experienced. So I closed my eyes, obeying the rules of the game, and I knew this is completely out of my comfort zone, and this is completely an experience of surrender to God. Because otherwise, I mean, you don't even think these things, but it was just in my spirit. I can't do anything other than surrender to God. Cesar, that is so intense. What did you do next? 
<sighs> First thing I did, I started singing Hugh inwardly. Um, I think you already showed how the Hugh is sung. Hugh. But this was not the time to sing Hugh out loud. I knew that for a fact. And besides singing Hugh, I also called upon the Mahanta, who is my inner guide, uh, the spiritual guide of the students of Ekankar. So I started singing Hugh inwardly. And next thing, the robbers started you know, touching, you know, sensing for what I had in my pockets, uh, found my wallet. There was a debit card in there. And they said, well, give us a pin number to this card. And I thought, oh, my money. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you know, I don't know that pin number. And they're like, well, if you don't know it, you're dead. You know, all these kinds of things. And I'm just, I'm so calm. I can't believe how calm I am. So I'm just saying, you know, I don't have it. It's not like there's fear in my voice. And I'm just like, no, I don't know it. And But then they are threatening me and I keep my cool. No, I don't know it. And I'm quiet. And the car is riding somewhere, who knows where. And maybe a few seconds or maybe a few minutes into it, I had this inner knowing, are you going to risk your life for whatever amount is in that account? And I realized how silly of me to defend my hundred dollars <laughs> versus being killed or something, right? So I was like, hey, wait a minute, I think I, I have the number. And I knew I had the number. And they're like, well, it better be it, otherwise, it's the end of you or whatever they said. And <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing now, but it was pretty, pretty intense. So I gave them the number. And before arriving at the bank, they told me to get on the floor in the little space in between the front and back seat of the Vito, which is nothing. So there I am in fetal position. And all I can do is visualize HU in my inner vision where the third eye is in between the eyebrows. Again, my eyes were closed and I could just focus on that inner vision, H-U. I just knew I needed to keep this line of spiritual protection and spiritual alertness open for whatever was coming, which I had no idea what was next. And we rode and rode and rode around the city. By the way, I was so calm that I started bargaining with a guy. And I said, hey, uh, how about we split what's in that account? <laughs> and uh, he said, yeah, sure. And I said something like, you give me your word of man, tu palabra de hombre. You know, like in Mexico, it's a very, of course, very manly thing to say, right? And he said, yeah. And, and, and I, I was trying to see if that would get him to leave half of that money for me, right? Uh, Christmas was coming. I needed to have a little something. And uh, so eventually the guy went down to the bank we kept riding, and I was still in the back of the car on the floor. And at some point, we picked him back up. They sat me back again for whatever reason. And then they said, OK, let, take us to your family or take us to someone. We need more money. And I was like, there's no one I can bring you to. And I mean, yes, I could have brought them places, but why would I? And I said, I'm sorry, I have no one. The thing is, they let go of the idea of me taking them anywhere for more money. And then they decided they were going to drop me off in the middle of nowhere, midnight at this point. And of course, with more threats, they, they said I should get off of the car and not turn around, you know, to look at a license plate. They didn't explain, but it was just, don't look. If you turn around, that's the end of you. They drove away and then I opened my eyes. And this was a bad part of town, didn't look nice. No one was around, fortunately. And in the distance, long, long, many, I don't know, maybe a kilometer away or something, there was a subway that I saw past. So I was like, okay, there's a subway. I can go ride the subway to get back home. At this point, now I'm singing Hugh out loud in the middle of the dark streets of Mexico, because I really need to feel that protection more vividly, right? So I'm singing Hugh, singing Hugh, singing Hugh. I reach the subway station and the operators tell me, oh, that was the last train. And I'm like, oh no, gosh. So 
I have to find a way to get home, right? And I don't even know where I am in the city. So I go down, I hail a cab, and this guy rolls down his window, and I said, I need to get home, but I don't have money to pay you. I was just robbed. So it's really on you. And the guy just looked at me, eyed me up and down, and said, okay, sure, get in. I could not believe it. As I was entering that vehicle, in that moment, a Chrysler Spirit vehicle drove past us. And the words spirit jumped at me. I was used to seeing those cars in Mexico, and they always meant, oh, spirit, spirit is here, the Holy Spirit is here. Well, in this moment, spirit was showing that it was there. And the license plate on the car had, there's usually three letters in Mexico. It was H-U something, so the hue was there with spirit, and I almost started sobbing in that moment. I hadn't even started the ride, and I could already feel love embracing me and saying, you're good. Seeing that HU and spirit was the most beautiful waking dream I could have ever had. Waking dreams are, I think, one of the coolest things out there. In Ekinkar, we define a waking dream as anything in your daily life that to you has special meaning. And just like you said, Cesar, to you seeing spirit uh, you know, that car, maybe to anyone, it wouldn't have meant anything. Mm-hmm. And seeing the hue on a license plate, mm-hmm. I love that, how God communicates with us individually. And the waking dream continues, let me tell you. Because then we had 20 minutes of conversation, this man and I, and he was sharing with me, you know, about his work, driving late hours, the dangers of it. You don't ever know who you're going to pick up. Because I was saying, thank you for trusting me. And uh, as I heard his, his telling me about his job and his life, I felt compassion for him. Because it's got to be rough, riding those streets for years and never knowing what you're going to run into. I knew that I wanted to find a way to get him some money if I could gather a few coins at least when I would arrive home, which I wasn't sure. But I also knew I needed to share the hue. And eventually we we reached home. I said, by the way, what is your name? And so here's the waking dream part. He says, oh, my name is Salvador. And Salvador in Spanish means savior. And I was like, yes, yeah, that's what you've been to me. You've been my savior. I cannot thank you enough. And let me see if I can get you something from inside the house, money, and there's something else I want to share with you. So I went in. Fortunately, I did find a little something And I brought him a Hue brochure that I had at home. So I explained how it had helped me, how it could help him if he wanted. I never imposed the Hue to anyone. I just shared it. Um, He was happy to receive it. We said goodbye. And then I arrived into my apartment again. And then I opened my journal from the morning. Today I will be grateful for everything that I experience. Oh my gosh, those words. They were not written by anyone else other than my own hand that morning. So that meant so much more than just a positive affirmation. (laughs) Was I going to be truly grateful for everything that I experienced? And it invited me to look into the experience more thoroughly and realize I could have been hit badly. I could have been harmed, killed. Uh, Other than verbal insults, I was completely unscathed and safe. And that was a miracle. And so I could be grateful for the hue and the mahanta, obviously. Because otherwise, who knows? And in the end, the hue prevailed. And divine love brought me safe home. So two weeks later, it was my talk about gratitude. And I had a story to tell about gratitude and the hue, right? So I delivered my story, and about a month or two later, I come back to the local X center, and one of the Ekinkar students approaches me and says, 
thank you so much for telling me that story you told two months ago. And I said, oh, uh, which one? And she says, the one about being assaulted. The same thing happened to me shortly after I heard your story. And I knew exactly what to do. And I made it, and I was safe too. So thank you. And what struck me was that even if sometimes we experience these horrible things, when we are able to rise above them, they can be of help for someone else. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well... Sri Harold Klemp has noted that life puts us all in situations that can cause us to panic. The goal is to remember to calm down, get soul back in control of the mind. That helps you to think clearly enough to see what needs to be done. Then you can take care of the situation, just like Cesar did. Now for our audience, this is your opportunity to test drive the hue. The following quote by Harold Klemp describes this God sound. Then we'll sing hue for about a minute or so and give you a chance to experience the calming effects of the hue for yourself. All right, get comfortable if you like. Here we go. The sound of God is contained in the word hue, a sacred name for God. This word can be used quietly at work, at home, or anytime you face a crisis. After you have done everything you can do, you sing this word quietly. Then stand back and let spirit take charge. You... So calming. You know, this sacred word, it belongs to all people. And you can sing it at home, in your car, anywhere, and anytime you have a need. So if the hue speaks to you and you'd like to weave it into your spiritual practice or maybe start a new one, there's a great resource for you. It's the Hue app. It's free. And it has a 20-minute recording of thousands of people singing Hue, very, very similar to the one you just heard. For even more life-changing, spirit-charging exercises that can enhance your soul adventure, whatever it may be, check out ekinkar.org and the show notes for an abundance of free resources. That's our show for today. Thank you, Cesar. Thank you, Heather, for this wonderful invitation. And thank you for listening. All the best on your soul adventures. See you next time.